Doctor Who, why do you have no hair? <laughs> That's a secret about human hair. Want to explore it with me? Ah, yes! Let knowledge click. On top of our heads, there are thousands of little flower pots called hair follicles. Each follicle is like a tiny pot, and your hair is like a baby plant growing from it. Hair doesn't grow all the time, it grows in three stages. Anagen, growing stage. The hair like the little plant grows and gets longer. This stage can last for many years. About 85 to 90% of your hair is growing right now. Catagen, resting stage. The hair follicle takes a short rest and gets smaller. Blood flow to the hair slows down. Hair stops growing for a few weeks. Telogen, falling out stage. After about three months, the old hair falls out and a new baby hair grows in its place. Does hair fall out a lot, Doctor Who? <laughs> oh! For Ooh. most people, it's normal to lose 50 to 100 hairs every day. If your hair is getting thinner or falling out a lot, might be because the follicles are very small or they rest for too long. Adults can lose a lot of hair and slowly become bald. Here is some reason why. First, there is a hormone called DHT. It makes the tiny hair pods shrink and smaller pods grow thinner, weaker hair. Secondly, as you get older, your hair follicles get weaker. Next, if someone in your family is bald, you might lose hair more easily too. If you don't eat well, as stressed, don't sleep enough, or don't take care of your hair properly, your hair can fall out faster. Let's play a guessing game. Which of the three stages have most hair to make our hair nice and thick? A. Uh -huh, I was right. <laughs> Correct. Thanks to the long antigen stage, our hair can grow healthy and beautiful. Mm. That's all for now. Stay tuned for our next exploration. Think of it. What are belly buttons for? Hmm. <laughs> Did you know why we have belly ah. buttons? <laughs> Let knowledge click. Huh. Hmm. When the baby is still in the womb, oh. it can eat, wow. breathe, or drink <laughs> milk on its own. <laughs> Instead, the baby gets food from the mother through a special tube called the umbilical cord. Besides food, the umbilical cord also carry oxygen and nutrients from the mother to the baby. After birth, the umbilical cord isn't needed anymore. The doctor will cut it to separate the baby from the mother. After about 7 to 14 days, the umbilical cord will fall off on its own without causing any pain. Even though everyone's belly button looks a little different, it's a reminder that we all once live in our mom's tummy. The belly button doesn't do much, but it still needs to be kept clean like the rest of your body. Gently wash your belly button during bath time. Keep it dry afterward. And don't touch it with your dirty fingers. crying so much did you know why lucy cries let knowledge click our eyes see things and send signal to the brain 
When we feel strong emotions like fear or sadness, the brain reacts and tell the body how to respond. It sends signal to the tear glands, which make tears that flow out of your eyes. Tears aren't all the same. In our eyes, there are actually three types of tears. First, there are basal tears, like little bodyguards that keep our eyes moist and clean every day. Second, reflex tears. They show up quickly when something like dust, onions, or wind bothers your eyes to wash it away. And finally, emotional tears, like Lucy's just now. They appear when we feel really sad, happy, or deeply moved. Can you guess why babies cry so much? Um, I'm not sure. Babies can talk yet, so crying is their way of communicating. Like when they're hungry or need a diaper change. <laughs> What's happening to us? Maybe we're sick. We need to quarantine. Oh. <laughs> oh. You're just yawning. Oh. Not sick at all. Take those off. I'll explain. Let knowledge flee. Yawning is when your body opens your mouth to take in air. Oh. Like opening a window to freshen up your brain. Wait. There's a room inside our heads? <laughs> oh! When you study or think a lot, your brain gets tired. It needs more air to cool down. So it sends a yawn signal, and your mouth opens wide to let in a big breath. Yawning also brings more blood to your huh. brain when you're sleepy or tired which helps you feel more awake. Wow! <laughs> Yawning is like a little alarm for your body. Hmm. You might yawn when you're overworked <sighs> or when you didn't sleep enough. <laughs> that means it's time to rest. Ah. Oh. And sometimes you yawn just because you're <sighs> bored. When you see someone else yawn, <sighs> you might yawn too. Mm, so, what if we yawn but it's not bedtime yet? You can stand up, oh. drink some water, or walk around a bit to help you feel more awake. And remember, if you oh. yawn in public, mm. cover your mouth oh. to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> We got it! Slow down, Lucy! Don't stub your mouth! Oh. You're joking! <laughs> What's happening to me? Your tummy's mad because you didn't chew your food properly. Oh. I'll tell you. Let knowledge clear. Inside your tummy is a special team called the digestive system. When you chew your food well, your speed helps make it soft so it can slide down your throat. Then it goes through a long tube and into your stomach. Your stomach squeezes and adds special juices to break the food down. Next, it moves to the small intestine where the food turns into nutrients. The nutrients travel all around your body to help you grow strong. And if you don't chew well, trouble's coming. If a bite of food is too big and go down without enough chewing, it can get stuck in your throat. 
Not only that, the big piece is hard to digest. Your stomach gets tired and doesn't make enough juice. So you feel full, sore, or hear funny tummy sounds. As a result, your intestines can get all the nutrients. That means even if you eat a lot, your body still doesn't get strong. My tummy! Huh? I'll chew better and stop rushing my food from now on. That's it for today. Join Wufu as he continues exploring the amazing world in the next episode. Discover everything around us on Wufu Explore Channel.